In just two decades, SpaceX went from Elon Musk's dream of a greenhouse experiment on Mars to conducting the majority of U.S. rocket launches. But that's not enough for Musk ambitions in space. At nearly 400 feet, with the name Starship, the new SpaceX rocket will eventually be taller than the Saturn V that carried NASA's Apollo missions to the moon, and its 33 engines will deliver twice the thrust. For Elon Musk, it's meant to play a key role in one day establishing a human colony on Mars. Starship's first orbital flight, when it comes, will definitely reverberate through the space industry. SpaceX has spent over a year preparing for this, but there are some problems preventing Starship from launching into space including the heat shield tiles falling off when the 33 Raptor 2 engines are fired, the launch stand blowing into pieces at the blast of the 33 Raptors, and the booster fuel pipe leakage. But luckily, Elon Musk has a viable solution to solve all these problems and get all 33 Raptor 2s to blast off without any flaw. Whether or not you're taking him at his word, it's certainly worth exploring his engineering masterpiece. So what exactly is that solution? Let's find out today in this episode of Alpha Tech. Not short of ideas or technological innovations, Elon Musk is very seriously considering using the Starship's launch tower to catch Super Heavy before landing on the ground. And it's time to talk about Mechazilla, the giant robotic launch and landing tower that will be literally catching Starship rockets out of the air with chopstick arms and sometime in the not so distant future. It's an unprecedented and fantastical idea from Elon and the SpaceX engineers, but it's not about showing off. This is a purely functional decision for the company. Indeed, the Mechazilla launch tower is one of the most ambitious features of a spaceflight project already breaking new ground. You'll immediately feel this from its height. If you have the chance and you're close to Boca Chica, Texas, take a drive or a walk and see for yourself SpaceX's big Mechazilla launch tower you'll surely be grateful what your eyes will behold. Wow, look at that. I mean, it's far down there. If this isn't surreal, I don't know what is. Yeah, totally. It's insane. How tall is this again at this point? 100, well, 143 meters at the top. Okay. 138 maybe. <laughs> oh my God. And look at how, uh, how hazy even the production site is right now. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is not a good place if you have a fear of heights, that's for sure. <laughs> well, this crazy height is understandable when we consider the mission of the tower. Elon shared this for the first time December 30th, 2020, through Twitter replies, of course, when someone asked if the Super Heavy would descend to land the same way as Falcon 9. Elon replied, we're going to try to catch the Super Heavy booster with the launch tower arm using the grid fins to take the load. Many assumed that maybe the booster would be too tall and heavy for legs, but Elon clarified legs would certainly work, but best part is no part. Best step is no step basically saying they could do it the easy way, but he's choosing the hard way on purpose with good reason. Elon also wrote, saves mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of booster onto launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. So if the Super Heavy were to come down onto the landing pad the same way the first Starship test did, then it's actually going to take a lot of work to get it back on the launch mount, even if it's not far away. First, they'd need both a mobile crane and a giant tank, a tank tread transport vehicle they use at Starbase for moving rockets. The crane would have to pick the booster up, put it on the transport, then move the whole situation over to the launch mount, then use the crane again to move the booster back to the launch mount, and then drive both of the giant machines back to the hangar. And in addition to being heavy, expensive, complex, landing legs themselves can be fragile and maintenance intensive. Okay, so we have a pretty good idea why he's doing it, but now we need to try and figure out how it's going to work, and that's pretty fun. On January 20th, Musk had published the first official visualization of what SpaceX's plans to catch Super Heavy Booster might look like in real life. Based on the simulated telemetry shown in the visualization, Super Heavy's descent to the landing zone appears to be considerably gentler than the suicide burn SpaceX routinely uses on Falcon. 
By decelerating as quickly as possible and making landing burns as short as possible, Falcon saves a considerable amount of propellant during recovery, extra propellant that, if otherwise required, would effectively increase Falcon's dry mass and decrease its payload to orbit. In the super heavy catch Musk shared, the booster actually appears to be landing just on an incredibly small patch of steel on the tower's mechazilla arms instead of a concrete pad on the ground. Aside from a tiny bit of lateral motion, the arms appear motionless during the catch, making it more of a landing. Further, Super Heavy is shown decelerating rather slowly through the simulation and appears to hover for almost 10 seconds near the end. The challenge is a bit like if SpaceX for some reason made Falcon boosters land on two elevated ledges about as wide as car tires. That slow, cautious descent, even slower touchdown, may be necessary because of how incredibly accurate Super Heavy has to be to land on a pair of hard points with inches of lateral margin of error and maybe a few square feet of usable surface area. Aside from demanding accurate rotational control, even the slightest lateral deviation would cause the booster to topple off the pillars and, in the case of Super Heavy, fall about 100 feet onto the concrete where it would obviously explode. In the event of a larger anomaly during a landing attempt, Starship or Super Heavy could accidentally impact the launch tower, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. At least to some extent, SpaceX likely knows this, and Super Heavy would likely need to be in excellent health and perform perfectly during the ascent and boost back portion of the launch debut to be cleared for a catch attempt. Um, we have not found a reason yet why it will not work. Yes, success is one of the possible outcomes. <laughs> the probability is uncertain, but the, it is above zero. And if the tower can catch the rocket and move it back into position onto the launch pad, that could help SpaceX reuse rockets faster than ever. The fastest turnaround time for a Falcon 9 booster from previous flight to reflight, 21 days, six hours. In March 2020, Musk said he wants Starship to be able to fly three times a day. If he wants to build a city on Mars by 2050, he might come to depend on that rapid turnaround time. In 2019, he estimated the city would require around 1 million tons of cargo to reach self-sufficient status. If each ship carries 100 tons, that means SpaceX would need to make 10,000 flights over the next 30 years, or around 333 per year, which is pretty damn trippy. Well, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, leave us with a like and consider subscribing to get more content just like this. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow.